Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Lewis, Lewis Speaks 2021. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about the gay life. You know, I have made so many videos documenting my experience living as a black gay male. And I'm here to tell you that it's just so difficult. You know, everyone wants to accuse you for one of being homophobic. I'm far from homophobic. I love gay men. I think that they're talented. I think that they're beautiful, but I also think that they are the most damaged, broken people. And I understand the underlying causes. I understand the invalidation. I understand living in a heteronormative world. I get those concepts. I understand it completely and how that must impact, I guess, the gay consciousness, the gay psyche. But at the same time, I gotta be real. This life is starting to look like a slow death. It's starting to look like a slow death. You can't find, for one, you can't find a good relationship at all. This is hookup culture now. You know, if you don't put out, if you don't have sex on the first date, if you're not sucking penises on the first date, don't nobody want you. They just reject you. They cancel you. You get blocked on Grinder. You know, you get ignored. So that's one. You can't find a a decent partner, you know, and then when you do find a partner, you do happen to find somebody, they're out there cheating, sleeping around, cutting your throat, stabbing you in your back. It's just too much. It's too much. So you can't find loyalty, devotion, or even accountability. No one wants to take accountability for anything anymore. <clears throat> they wrong you, they are just so unapologetic and fierce about it. They're strong in their wrong. They don't want to apologize. It's your fault for feeling anything for them. You're always the blame. <laughs> so not being able to find a viable partner, that's one. Not being able to find decent friends. I have been a gay man, I would say for, uh, I would say 14 years. 14 years I lived my life as a gay man. And out of those 14 years, I don't have not one gay male friend I can call on or for, I guess, or really depend on, you know? I have associates, some high and by people, but friends, people who will be there for you during a crisis, during the most difficult times in your life, nope. <laughs> They're only there for the trips, spend your money, you know? Talk about how they're getting played by other dudes. That's what they want to do. Commiserate on misery. They don't want to help you out when you really need. They don't want to feed you spiritually when you need spiritual food. And that's how that brings me to the third one. As gay men, it seems to me like we really don't want to talk about spiritual things. We don't want to talk about God. We don't want to talk about his, his, his blessings and his purpose in our lives. Anytime that I've opened that door and tried to communicate these feelings to other gay men, they reject them, they shut them down, you know? And I've learned that as a gay man, it feels like you have to leave your spirituality at the door. And what I've learned early on is that any place that I cannot take my God with me is a place that I should not be. And so I have been thinking about all these things, all these things I've been thinking about and I'm just exhausted with this life. I'm exhausted. I have, I would say, sexual orientation fatigue. There comes a point where you are just so traumatized. I have relational trauma, you know? They mentioned CPTSD, complex PTSD. I think almost every gay man has complex PTSD, but I think that if you continue to live in this life, you're gonna get CCPTSD which is complex, complicated PTSD. So it's just like, I'm just tired. I'm really tired of the nonsense. And I'm just thinking this is not where I wanna be. I'm thinking about my future. I'm thinking about like everything. I, I've just been thinking about, do you wanna continue down this road, Lewis? Logging on to Grinder, 
having to beg people to come over to your apartment and spend time with you. And when they do spend time with you, all they want to do is blow your back out. All they want to do is use you and dump this scum in you. Half of these guys, they just want to use you and then dip. Half of them, they know they're HIV positive. They don't tell you anything, you know? They like to operate under this belief that they're undetectable. But my question is this, at what point in the stage of your, your treatment and the course of your diagnoses, do you stop becoming undetectable? and start becoming detectable again because you haven't been compliant with your medications. At what point? So I'm supposed to wait and let you sit up there and experiment on my body. <laughs> no. 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 And that's all that's out here are people that just want to experiment on you. And it's just, you know, it's just, it's exhausting. You know, you have to wake up. You have to just admit. And people want to call you homophobic because you don't want to partake in this lifestyle anymore. Oh, you must want to this. You, you must want to hate. You must hate gays. You must. I don't hate nobody. I'm just waking up to the sad reality that we as gay men are just broken messes. We're broke down messes. And if you don't take ownership of that, and if you don't see that, if other people do not see that, well, then I don't know what to tell them. I don't know what to tell them. And am I somehow saying that heterosexuality is better? I'm saying that there's some perks. You know, I know for one that there are women out there as we speak who are waiting through some divine act of God that I become heterosexual so that way they can love on me, give me children, give me a life, build with me. Can I say the same thing about gay men? No, I don't know of any gay men right now in my life or out in where I live who wants to build with me? All they want to do is tear me down. All they want to do is break my spirit. All they want to do is try and break me as an ego boost. So like I said, I can't, I can't have that. As you get older, the gay life starts to look a little bit dimmer. You don't see the fun times anymore. The strobe lights get dimmer. You know, and then you have to come home and you, you have to build a life. Your 30s, you want someone to build a life with. You don't want to sit up here and basically die alone. Who wants to die alone? Nobody wants to die alone. So I think that's the, the ultimate gay fear is dying alone. But oftentimes, that's the reality. There's so many older, lonely gay men who are willing to pay for company, who pay the young ones, who offer sugar daddy services just to have somebody in their lives. And that to me is sad. You gotta pay for love. <sighs> that's all that's out here. You know, you reach a certain age and you no longer are viable. You know, you got men out here who are fighting age, trying their best to use everything from plastic surgery to pills, to hair dyes, to everything, just to avoid aging because people know that once you age in the gay community, you're invisible. Once you turn 30, they say you're done. They say your career as a gay man is over. Chalk it up. That's what they say. And 30 is young. <sighs> Being in your 30s is young. But in the gay community, age is not respected. Age is something that's feared and pitied. And that's another reason why I can't get with this community because you don't, they, they don't have any respect for their elders. There's no respect for the elders. But then again, how can you respect the elders when the elders are still living these Peter Pan, arrested development type existences? How can I respect my elders if my elders are not showing me how to age gracefully, how to age successfully? How can I respect these? So it's a two-way street. No respect for elders, but the elders don't, don't warrant respect. So there's just too many issues in this community. And I think that it's important to really just decide what you want to do. If this is something that you want to pursue, that's on you. I know for me personally, I just don't want to continue on in a life that don't love me back. This life don't love me back. 
This life sets me back. And I can't do it no more. I can't. So, for all those who are listening to this video, thank you very much. I hope you definitely do not take this video to be an assault or attack on gay men. It's not. It's a call to action. It's a call to basically re reconfigure and rethink this life because quite frankly, it's just not working. And there comes a point where you have to realize like, wait a minute, what I'm doing is not okay. What I'm doing is not getting me anywhere. I'm just beating my head against a wall, going around in circles, trying to get love, trying to get affection, trying to get a future, and it's not working. So I gotta do something different. Something else has got to give. Something's gotta give. So. If you feel the same way too, definitely like this, share this, you know, because I, I definitely, I understand. There are so many gay, young gay men even, who are disenchanted with the life, who can no longer continue putting up with the nonsense. They can't deal with it. People are waking up. They're starting to see that they've been sold a faulty bill of goods. We've been sold lies. People telling us this is community and there's love here. Together, there's no love. There's no sense of community. It's all just to get you out there. And when you're out there, you're basically on your own. <laughs> well, this is Lewis Speaks, y'all. Wishing y'all a successful, successful life. Peace.